The city of Charlotte, North Carolina is the setting for our broadcast tonight. And isn't the view magnificent? It's the NBA. Welcome to our Sunday night broadcast here on 2K Sports. Welcome everyone to the broadcast table. Chris Weber to my right, Greg Anthony to my left. I'm Kevin Harlan and David Aldridge on our sideline. DA, take it away. Kevin, thanks. Well, among the league's deadlier weapons now is the step back jumper. Steph Curry said, you're always in control of the situation with that move. It is pretty effective. Portland's Damian Lillard said, it's a tough off-balance shot, so it takes a lot of work. But people around the league are putting in that work to become even more effective. Guys? Thanks, David. So here's Oklahoma City's starting group. Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Gilgis Alexander out there with Chris Paul. And it's Dort in at the small forward position. And for Charlotte, we've got Devontae Graham. His Mac Biombo is out there with Washington. Then it's Bridges. And it's Rozier in at the one. Well, this seems to be a game that could be very tactical, Greg. Both teams relying on execution in the half court. And, Kevin, you're going to see a lot of ball movement and body movement. And you can't just stand around and watch one guy go to work. I think that puts so much pressure on the defense with how the game is played. And an emphasis on coaching, too. Yes. Biombo with the block. Here's Bridges. Pass to Rozier. Back to Bridges. Shot clock at three. Takes a three. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. Definitely a situation you want to make sure you don't give him too good of a look. A nice shot by Gallinari. I've seen Paul make about a million of those passes over his career. He never gets old. A lot of minute played so far here in the first. And it's Rozier missing. It seemed like he changed his mind halfway through the layup. Tried to go to something else and, and flat out choked it. Well, it's all about the assist on that play. He puts it in the perfect spot. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Biombo kicks to Rozier. Paul grabs the board. A cold start for the three shots, three misses. Good thing is early. Got a hand on it. Uh, the risk of rejection is real. When Washington's around you, you got to be extra careful around him. Launches a three, and Dortch gets it to go. Dortch got his second basket of the night. And good to get him going early. That, that shot should give him some confidence. Yeah, it's all about establishing the rhythm. When I mean, you start to see it fall, you, you begin to believe. Now, here's Rogier. Shot to stop the run. That one falls. Nowhere on the floor is Rozier not a threat. He's an effective scorer in any position. Rozier against Paul. To the middle. Here's Adams. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. And the story here, Kevin, early on, is how well they've shot the basketball. Graham surveying the floor. Bridges kicks to Graham. Inside. And it's Rozier missing. Really just struggling here in the first few minutes. Five attempts with only one falling. And, you know, we talk a lot about Paul as a leader on and off the court. Was elected president of the Players Association back in 2013. Re-elected for a four-year term in 2017. People simply trust his point of view. Well, we know for Chris Paul, Greg, it's nothing new to lead, but on Oklahoma City last year, he had to do it without being surrounded by superstars. And you know, that's okay. Paul's a guy who wants to set the table. You have to have the ball to do that, and he's at his best when directing traffic and making his teammates better.
first free throw is good. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. So Rogier will bring it up for the Charlotte Hornets. Nine point game. Pass to Bridges. Back to Rogier. Pass to Bridges. Shot clock at five. Off target from three point range. That's a look you cannot pass up. It's also one you should miss. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. This is his second trip to the free throw line. Here's Graham. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Now the pass to Rozier. Back to Graham. Shoots over Gilgis Alexander. Charlotte no good that time either. Oh, defense, they just took that possession off. I mean, they get away with it that time, but they got to show some more aggression. Adams. And Adams with the slam. Displaying intensity right off the opening tip, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, they've been very aggressive, and they've taken early control of this game. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Looking to end the run, and it's laid in by Rogier. A clever play. Rozier able to navigate through the contact to a strong finish. Ball left side. Outside for Gilgis Alexander. To the inside. Well-timed pass, and he goes straight to the bucket for the layup. Dort's got 12 in the game. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. Graham dishes to Bridges. Biombo, the pass to Bridges. And the layup fall. Now, this is what we saw from Bridges in college. The live body. Able to make contact and complete plays. Fall against Rogier. Paul is doubled. Pass to Dort. Down low. It's tipped and out of bounds as the Hornets gain possession. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. And when you're behind in the game, that's what you've got to do. Contest every shot. Hornets trail by 12. Graham with the bounce pass. Here's Washington. Some solid defense from Gallinari. Thunder have gone 7-9 from the field. A really nice start offensively for them. Missile blows. Bucket is good. And he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. Excellent all-around performance so far. Hence the big lead. They've come out of the gate strong at both ends of the floor. Just, just in total control so far. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. Terrific form at the line throughout last season. 89% on the year. And the Hornets making a change here. Zeller's checked in. Terrence Ferguson's checked in for the Thunder. And when Gallinari is healthy, 
He's such an effective player. I mean, a skilled shooter who really helps to space the floor for his team. Now, here's Rogier. Passes it to Washington. Missed inside. He's not an easy man to stop when he's attacking the basket. The D doing everything he can. Gallinari finds Paul. Back to Gallinari. And Gallinari throws it down. Really seizing the momentum of this game, but doing it with a methodical approach. They decided to pound the ball inside, using their physicality to set the tone. Now here's Zeller. And Adams sends it back. Adams puts every ounce of energy into his defense. He's not out there to contest shots. He's out there to reject them. Gilgis Alexander against Graham. And the call is going to be, yes, yes it is, an illegal screen. Uh, beyond the leaning, you could see his feet weren't set on that screen. Easy call. Uh, yeah, even a slight movement is going to catch a ref's eye. I mean, they're trained to focus on that. Bacon, he's checked in for Charlotte. And a switcher also for Oklahoma City. Noel's checked in. Now, here's Rogier. Kicks to Graham. Dishes to Bridges. Back to Graham. Lock at six. Pass to Bridges. Now, here's Rogier. Defended by Paul. Lets it fly. And that one hits back iron. And until he starts knocking down some shots, I don't think the deficit's going to get any small. Nicholas Batum, he's checked in for the Hornets. Muscala, he's checked in for Oklahoma City. Dennis Schroeder comes in for Shea Gilgis-Alexander. So Charlotte calls timeout. They're first. Today, Greg, we see a lot more friendly rivals. Does that bother you? Not at all. I mean, people like to say, well, our era had the rivalries were more bitter. Um, I disagree with that. I, I think guys are every bit as competitive today as they've ever been. That's good to hear. Uh, they just also have more exposure and opportunity to be around one another. Kids today growing up, they've been playing against each other since the fifth, sixth grade in national tournaments. When we played, we didn't get to see the other top players around the country. So I think that was one reason why you didn't have a closeness with guys that unless you were on the same team. Hornets trail by 17. Bridges passes to Batum. Pope loose. And now the fast break. Schroeder with the ball. Ferguson's shot is good. Well-rounded effort, and, and they show no signs of letting up. Yeah, and it hasn't just been the offensive output. They're putting in the work at the defensive end as well. Now here's Batum. Batum against Schroeder. Ferguson kicks to Noel. Nobody near Schroeder. And the Thunder, another three. three. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. And here's Batum. And the foul called on Nerland's Noel. That is his first foul of the game. That's his first personal foul. There's the pass to Graham. And the foul called on Nerland's Noel. That'll be his second foul of the game. And just a little too amped up here early. Two fouls on him already. That's going to affect his playing time. And the Thunder making a switch here. Diallo's checked in. Over in the corner, Batum. Pass to Bridges. Clock at four. The Hornets need to get a shot off here. Here's Zeller. Off the mark, and the drop continues. Lays it up off the glass. Okay, he's putting that seven-foot frame to good use. I mean, Zeller pounding the glass. Schroeder against Batum. Passes it to Muscala. Here's Ferguson. Pass to Diallo. From the arc. Batum grabs the miss. 
And it's Batum with the ball, bringing it up for the Hornets. The pass to Zeller. Shoots over Schroeder. Shot by Zeller, no good. The defense has done a good job of forcing him into tough shots this quarter. Diallo off the left rim and out. Hornets trail by 20. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. And not allowing the shooter even an inch of breathing room on that one. That's just great defense, forcing this man into a difficult attempt. Now flying high and throwing it down with the one hand. One of his favorite moves right there, guys. Now Graham. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Here's the teardrop. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. First personal foul, team's third. And, and making an immediate impact in this league, Graham was a tremendous find in the second round. Yeah, the 34th pick in 2018. Some scouts felt he had a low ceiling, but someone who never loses confidence because he's had to prove himself at every level. That makes you battle-tested, and it prepares you to affect winning. And that one falls for Graham. The Thunder leading by 19 points. Shooter passes to Ferguson. And he's going up for the alley-oop. Up high to stuff the alley-oop. Yeah, his teammates are going to like Gallinari more and more with every one of those passes. Good job to set up for a wide-open look. Now, here's Batum. Here's Bacon. He dishes it to Graham. He kicks to Batum. Just five on the clock. No good on the shot. Now Oklahoma City takes it the other way. Here's Ferguson. Another shot. And Gallinari puts it in. Gallinari's got nine. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. And the Hornets call time here. Greg, did you know when you were playing that you'd eventually want to call games, be in the broadcast table? Hey Kevin, no idea. I, I didn't have any clue. And quite honestly, didn't really think that there was a, a career that one could have in terms of broadcasting. You know, because cable was just kind of coming on as I was retiring. You didn't have your own network and the things that we take for granted now. So looking back on it, no. But boy, am I glad I did. I am glad you did, too. You, you probably don't remember this. Doc Rivers and I were doing a game. You came over to say hi to the two of us, went back out on the floor. Doc nudges me and said he'll be great in TV someday. So we saw it then. He's a, he's a good mind. The man knows what he's talking about. He's checked in for Miles Bridges. Charlotte has gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Outside Batum. Pass to Bacon. Now here's Batum. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. And that one, good. This is the kind of teammate Batum is. You like seeing him share it like this. Schroeder passes to Muscala. Gallinari surveying the D. It's tipped, and the whistle stops game play. It's not a clean block shot. Instead, a shooting foul, and we'll see free throws coming up right here. For Oklahoma City, they have looked good at the line tonight. They're perfect in four attempts. And they had a lot of success a season ago as a team, hitting about 80% of their free throws. Two, 
The first one falls. And that one goes in, two from the line that time. And doing a good job getting to the line and capitalizing. Outside, Batum feeds it to Zeller. And the dunk by Zeller. One of the better screen and roll prospects to enter the league in 2013. You see the hard work he's putting into it here in the pros. Now here's Diallo. Passes to Muscala. The dish to Schroeder. Shot clock at six. Shoots over Graham. The Thunder with another miss. Oh, I thought that one was going to go down. The mid-range jumpers. Oh, man, that's usually a bunny with the deep playing soft like that. A nice shot by Zeller. He has great body control for a big man. Zeller takes the hit, but keeps on finishing Schroeder off the mark there with the three-point shot and so it's the Oklahoma City Thunder taking a 19-point lead into the break and it's been their rugged defense setting the tone don't go anywhere we'll be right back Well, recently, Chris Paul talked about adding some levity to the game. It sounds so generic to say we have fun, but, like, we may lose a game here or there, but, you know, everybody's still, you know, happy for each other. You know, we're just trying to build. Yeah, from what we've uh, seen, Greg, these guys naturally get along. And you add in the guiding hand of Chris Paul. Uh, this team can beat anyone on any night because they're so connected. And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And for the Thunder here, they've been putting on a show, guys. Just cashing in on second chance opportunities. That's how they built this early lead. Well, it's part of their strategy coming in, no doubt. And, and there may not be that much their opponent can do about it. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. Setting the floor for the Hornets. Inside, Cody Zeller and Bismack Biombo. Ante Graham is out there with Batum. And it's Bacon in at the three, the small forward. And Biombo, no good on that one. Greg is a broadcaster. Who have been some of your favorite personalities to cover? Man, that's a great question. Uh, you know, most of the stars, it, it, I, I'm a big fan of, of Duran and Steph and LeBron and those guys. Chris Paul's another one that, that's a favorite. Uh, so many other guys, you know, there's so much more personality and so much more confidence that these guys have working uh, in front of the camera. I think that just makes for a, a better experience. Somebody asked me the other day, who is my favorite? You know who I said? Who was that? Shots Greg good. Anthony. Oh, you're just saying that because it's true. <laughs> and we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Hey, Kevin, thanks very much. Well, Stephen Adams could be the league's most physical presence. All-star Jimmy Butler said that he is just so strong. Butler says he hit me with a screen, and I thought my life was over. Adams said his strength doesn't help with flopping. The refs are like, get up. Guys, he has a sense of humor about it, and maybe that's a counterbalance to his great physical gifts. You're right, D.A., he is strong. Thanks for that report. And that one misses. And there's the foul. That's on Steven Adams. That'll be his second foul of the game. Foul. 
Hornets trail by 21. Batum with the ball. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. And stolen by Diallo. And now the fast break. Schroeder with the ball. And no good that time. Great D that time from Batum. And here is Rozier. Lays it up and banks it in. Rozier's got his third bucket of the night. Uh, this is Rozier at his most dangerous, using his agility to completely outwit the defender. Alinari outside for the three. Offensive rebound. And Adams with the slam. Nothing soft about the putback there. And why chance it, right? Take the dunk if you've got it. Yeah, guys, but where was the box out? No excuse letting him roam that freely on the glass. Now, here's Rogier. He's got six outside for Batum. Here's Bacon. No one near Rogier as he lets it fly. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Even from long range, Rozier plays with real intensity. He's always on the attack. Schroeder, right side. Now here's Diallo, defended by Batum. Six to shoot. Molinari passes to Adams, and Adams with the slam. Oh, the movement off the ball is good. I mean, and the pass to hit him in stride is even better. Alinari brings the double team. Outside, Batum. No good on the three. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. He usually takes advantage of D like that. Should have been a simple layup. Now about three minutes gone in this second quarter of basketball. Here's Biombo. It's hauled in by Adams. Adams has got six rebounds in the game. Gallinari in the corner. A three-pointer off the mark. Hornets trail by 20. You know, discussing Biombo, it's hard not to think back to game three of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers, is it? I mean, how about 39 minutes? Only seven points scored, but how about 26 rebounds to lead his team to victory? He actually had a terrific series all the way around and then parlayed that into a $72 million contract the following year. Here's Rozier. Gallinari making his last shot. Bacon the pass to Batum. Rozier with the ball. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. Adams has got rebound number eight now on the night. In the corner, it's Diallo. Schroeder against Rogier. Schroeder dishes to Gallinari. The top of the key jumper is on the mark. Gallinari's got 15. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. You have to go to your best scores. I mean, it's a smart strategy, and so far, it's paying off in this game. Bacon's shot is off. He makes a lot more of those than he misses. Not sure what threw him off right there. Count that bucket. 14 points for him. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. Charlotte has gone one or two on three-pointers here in the second quarter so far. Latoon passes to Biombo. Pass to Rogier. It's stolen by Schroeder. Oh, and here comes Schroeder all alone. And he gets the bucket. And their balanced effort at both ends has hushed this crowd. No, because it's gone dead silent in this arena. What a fantastic time out, time performance out. here on the road. And the Hornets call right. time here. And he's been trying to do it all himself. And, and it's not working. Instead of forcing shots, he's got to focus on moving the ball and keeping everybody involved.
And some changes here for the Hornets. B.J. Washington comes in for Biombo, and it's Bridges in for Nicholas Batum. And then for Oklahoma City, Noel's checked in for Gallinari. Gilgis Alexander comes in for Diallo, and Chris Paul's subbed in for Dennis Schroeder. And the rejection by Noel. There's the triple. Paul's shot is off. And here's Rogier. He brings it up for Charlotte. Kicks it to Bridges. And that's a foul called on Shea Gilgis Alexander. That is his first foul of the game. Terrence Ferguson's checked in for the Thunder. Terrence Ferguson. The pass to Bridges to stop the drought. And Adams sends it back. And they'll keep possession. Five to shoot. And that's good. Miles Bridges for three. Bridges has got his second bucket tonight. Oklahoma City's gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. And he lobs it up toward the rim, and Noel throws it down. And he pulls off the Houdini to bake that catch and slam it through. Stupendous alley-oop. Paul against Rogier. Thunder with the rebound. Adams has got 11 rebounds in the game. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses. He'll be shooting two. That's a foul on Charlotte. And this young man, a rising scorer who continues to improve. Gilgis Alexander may soon be the focal point of every opponent's scouting report. And he knocks down the first one. A couple years ago, after making all-rookie second team, we knew Gilgis Alexander was good. But, Greg, last season he went from good <laughs> to great. I mean, how about almost doubling his scoring average? Became a tremendous rebounder out of the backcourt. He gives you assists and picks up steals as well. Once he gains more strength, this guy could be a perennial all-star. That one is no good. And the effort level of Gilgis Alexander drew rave reviews from his college coach as the hardest worker and most coachable player on the team. Now here's Graham. Five points in the game. But they'll get another chance. Bridges passes to Zeller. It's stolen by Adams. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. Perfect example of how to run the break the right way and get a great look. And he's got his first chance at the line here. It seems like every team, Greg, needs that one enforcer, that one guy who's going to get under opponent's skin. Well, in one poll of coaches and players, Adams was voted the second dirtiest player in the league. One guy said he's real physical, but maybe he crosses the line, throws the sneaky elbow here and there, commits extra hard fouls, yet Adams usually escapes foul trouble. Outside, Gilgis Alexander. And there's the call on Cody Zeller. That's foul number two for him. And that's foul number two. And maybe you don't sit him at this point, but you really have to be careful to not pick up another before half. Muscala, he's checked in for the Thunder. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Pass to Noel. And a great assist by Gilgis Alexander as that one goes in. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. 
Rozier against Paul. Some solid D from Paul. Oklahoma City's gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Here's Ferguson. He's got seven. Back to Gilgis Alexander. Six on the shot clock. Over Graham. Gilgis Alexander can't get it to go. Charlotte has gone two or three when they've stepped beyond the arc in the second quarter. Here's Rozier. Doesn't get it to drop for him. Paul with the defensive effort. And so it's Paul with it, bringing it up for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Muscala, the rim-rattling two-handed jam. Yeah, he, he's shown terrific control of the pace and the rhythm of this offense. Oh, man, so unselfish. He's doing a great job creating for others and, and making pinpoint passes. And it's Graham missing. It's been a really tough quarter for him. I mean, he cannot get his shots to drop. And it's off from three-point range. Now the Hornets shooting a low 30% mark from the field. And, and he has definitely been struggling in this quarter. Oh, just off his game, forcing a few shots, not letting the game come to him naturally. And, and if you're the guy who has to guard him, it is never going to be an easy night for you. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Here's Graham. Good D by Gilgis Alexander. He has shot them in the foot with his inability to make shots tonight. Dishes it to Paul. And they double up Paul. Some nice passing by Oklahoma City here. Ferguson misses. Now Rogier. He's got 11. Paul with the steal. And stolen by Graham. Got a piece of it. Rogier the pass to Zeller. And here is Washington. Passes it to Rogier. Paul with the steal. And the Thunder pushing it up now. Wide open. And misses it off the right side of the rim. 127 left in the first half. Rozier against Paul. Pass to Graham. Just five to shoot. Shoots over Gilgis Alexander. And it's Graham missing. Still looking for his first points of the quarter. He's not doing anything to help them cut into the lead. Gilgis Alexander, good. Largely because of that length, Gilgis Alexander feeling confident attacking inside. Now here's Graham. He's got five. There's 49 seconds left here in the second. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Ferguson misses. Charlotte's gone two or three when they've stepped beyond the arc in the second quarter. They get it again. Zeller can contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Well, this is one of the areas of the court where Zeller gets most of his offense, either converting inside, going, going to the line, or both. The Hornets have shot two free throws, and they're one of two so far. And they were 75% from the line a season ago. And that one falls for Zeller. The younger brother of Tyler Zeller and former son's big man Luke Zeller, Cody has a good chance to be the best of all three. Nicholas Batum, he's checked in for Rozier. And so Zeller nails both of them. 29 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Gilgis Alexander kicks to Ferguson. 
16 seconds left now here in the second. And a wide open look for Gilgis Alexander. The open jump shot off the mark. Now, here's Bridges. And the pass to Graham. Hits it from three-point range. Graham's got eight points. Oh, great ball movement from Bridges there. I mean, the self-awareness, uh, the selfless attitude leading to the wide open shot. And so it's the Oklahoma City Thunder out there all by themselves with a 32-point lead to end the quarter. Defensively, they have gotten after it, contesting every shot going up. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thanks. Billy, balanced scoring for your team. How pleased are you with the way they're keeping everybody involved offensively? Well, those guys, I think, have done a really good job of moving the ball and sharing the ball, and they're finding open men and they're willing passers, and I think because of that, they've been efficient offensively. Open shots tend to be made. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Good to see you back here on our halftime show. Well, actually, we can't see you, but you can see us, but you get it. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. You're watching the NBA on 2K Sports. Danilo Gallinari was the story in the first quarter. He had 23 points, six assists. It's been over a decade since the Seattle Supersonics became the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kenny, what are you thinking as you reflect on that move? Ooh, great tradition in Seattle, man. They won that championship back in 1979. Way before it was by I'm telling you. Yeah, Oklahoma City has established some tradition of its own. You know, uh, four conference finals, one NBA final. Even if they didn't win it, they were there. And sometimes you forget about those days until you're walking the halls where we were, and here comes Gary Payton walking down. And yeah. we say, oh. One of the great Sonics of all time. Yes, hey, here's Kevin Harlan. And that'll do it for us. The third quarter about to begin with Kevin Harlan standing by. We'll catch you on the flip side, my brother. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it has been a runaway. You look at Gallinari, what a contribution. You, you just love the patience in that first half. Waited until he got the look he wanted. Yeah, working the ball, getting clean, quality looks. I mean, just efficient basketball through and through. And on the floor for Billy Donovan as we get into the second half. They've got Noel. Gilgis Alexander out there with Paul. Then there's Gallinari. And it's Dort in at the three slot. Now here's Gilgis Alexander. Paul outside. Gallinari trying to get open. And Chris Paul the bucket on the assist by Gilgis Alexander. Gilgis Alexander's got four assists in the game. Pass to Graham. Makes it off the glass. He's got 10. It's a great move, and he catches the defense completely off guard. You'd like to see a little more energy coming out of halftime on the defensive end. And slam dunk by Noel. And the pass there floated it up to the precise spot it needed to be. And no messing around on the finish. He powers it through. Now, here's Rogier. And the rejection by Noel. And now a fast break for the Thunder. Pulls up for three, and Dortch gets it to go. Dortch got 17 now. A rock solid start for him. I mean, they're three for three since coming out of the locker room. Here's Graham. He can't get that one to fall. So the Thunder will take it the other way. Paul, right side. Passes to Noel. And slam dunk by Noel. Talk about execution on the offensive end. They're leaving nothing on the table right now. Absolutely relentless. They're in the flow and riding that way for as long as they can. Now, here's Bridges. Seven points in the game. Charlotte moving it around. Back to Rozier. Six to shoot. To the paint. To halt the run. And the rejection by Noel. And it's Graham missing. 
The rotation in the D could be better here. It, it'll cost them next time if it's not. Outside, Gilgis Alexander. The feed to Noel. And slam dunk by Noel. And this is Gilgis Alexander's responsibility to find his guys when they're open. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Iambo, the pass to Rogier. And there it is for him. I like that pick play. I mean, you can see how easily it makes it for him to get to the cup. And, and thinking back, Iambo selected seventh overall because of the pre-draft measurements and, and workouts, which were unreal. He has a seven-foot six wingspan. Flash tremendous speed for his size. But he also has showed a mature, positive attitude. He can speak five languages. Scouts came away impressed with his total package. Here's Rogier. Gallinari making his last shot. Rogier kicks to Bridges. Pass to Biombo. Now here's Graham. Defense is right there. No good there with this step back J. And Gildas Alexander's got the ball here for the Thunder. Their defense has only allowed six points in the second half. And there's the pass to Dort. To the middle, here's Paul. Takes the assist and lays it in. He's picked out the pass nicely. Paul's got five. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Now, here's Rogier. 13 points in the game over Paul. And it's Rogier missing. Oklahoma City has gone two of two from long range in the third quarter so far. Dort misses. Charlotte's gone three of seven tonight from three point territory. Graham, the pass to Rogier. Now, here's Washington. Pass to Bridges. Now, Rogier. Shot from the top of the key. That one off the back iron and out. The Thunder have gotten nearly everything to drop this quarter. They're seven of eight from the floor since halftime. And the shot goes in. And, and really keeping the ball hopping around here offensively. Charlotte shooting pretty terrible here in the third quarter at around 30%. Pass to Rogier. And he jams it after taking the nice feet on the run. Oh, you gotta love Rogier. Skying up for the dunk. Really seizing the opportunity and capitalizing with this tremendous leaping ability. Now here's Paul. He has seven, and it's blocked. They recover it. Rogier with the ball. Pass to Bridges. He kicks to Graham. Ball against Rogier. Pocket six. Graham from outside. Gilgis Alexander pulls it in. Gilgis Alexander's got his seventh rebound here tonight. Dort misses. Charlotte shooting a low, low 30% right now. An ugly offensive performance. Bridges against Paul. The pass to Rogier. Biombo with it. And he banks in the layup. Biombo's got his second basket of the night. Well, he'll take advantage of that kind of soft defense every time. Just give him a chance to attack the basket, and he will. Paul surveying the floor. Good on the shot. Paul's got nine points now in just the second half. He's really turned it around here in the second half. I mean, his offense has returned. And the officials will call the illegal screen right there. Uh, when a pick like that is questionable and creates that much of an advantage for the offense, you have to blow the whistle. Yeah, you can't blame the ref for making that call at all. The defense in general is already at such a disadvantage as it is. Charlotte making a switch here. Bacon's checked in. Oklahoma City's gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Paul dishes to Gallinari. He feeds it to Adams. And Adams with the slam. 
Steve and he's now got the double-double. 10 points and 11 rebounds. <laughs> he just bangs down the one-handed. Mm, two very easy points right here. Graham, the pass to Bacon. There's another turnover by the Hornets. Yeah, with no defensive pressure at all, you've got to be able to make that. Zeller is checked in for the Hornets. Batum comes in for Ogier. And then for Oklahoma City, Mike Muscala comes in for Gallinari. And Ferguson subbed in for Paul. And the Thunder with the possession here. Pass to Muscala. Schroeder looking over the floor from 20 feet out. And here's Diallo. Six points for him. They get it back. Adam. That's tipped. And registering one of the highest verticals at the NBA Combine. Zella can send your shot back. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Zeller's got 10 points. Now that's how you lead your teammate into an easy scoring chance. I love that assist. Here's Adams. And Bacon pulls it down. The Hornets have gone 6 of 14 since halftime. A little cold from the field. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Kevin, thank you. Now, we have seen continued growth with the NBA's affiliated leagues the last few years. Think about the explosion in popularity of the WNBA, the Basketball Africa League, expansion of the 2K League, greater pay in the WNBA and the G League pathway, along with the unionization of G League players. The league continues to show its commitment to expanding opportunities on multiple levels. Guys, back to you. Thank you, David. For Charlotte, they've gone 7 of 15 from the field here in the third quarter. Here's Bacon. He dishes it to Beyond. And these are his second and third free throws tonight. And, and you know, you'll take what he can give you from the free throw line. Looking at his numbers, just really not one of his strengths. Shooting in the low 60s last season. And the first one drops. And Biambo drops them both. And so it's Schroeder with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Here's Adams. And it's blocked. And Batoon has arms that go on forever and ever and ever, which is why he's so dangerous when it comes to shot block. Now Graham. Ten points for him. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That's it's on Dennis Schroeder. Charlotte shooting their seventh and eighth attempts at the foul line tonight. First one falls for him.
Off on that one, so he goes one for two at the line. Oklahoma City's gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Ferguson kicks it over to Schroeder. Here's Muscala. The shot's good on the assist by Schroeder. Muscala's got five now. Three-point shooting since the half has been about as good as you could ask for. Batum with the ball. Diallo's there. A shot by Batum. No good. Oklahoma City's gotten going here in the second half from outside. Nailing three of four from the arc. Basket good. Now here's Batum. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. To the left wing. Zeller passes to Biombo. And Adams sends it back. And they get it back. A nice shot by Zeller. And not relying at all on the three-point shot. Uh, they may want to rethink about stretching the defense a bit like they did in that first half. Now here's Adams. Ten points for him. That ball is good for another field goal. His sixth. He is six for nine on the stat sheet. He has created some terrific opportunities for himself and really made the most of them. Here's Graham. Down low. A shot by Batum. No good. The Thunder shooting a high 57% from the field in the third. 129 left in the third quarter. Now here's Diallo. Defended by Batum. Four on the clock. And it's Schroeder missing. Well, the Hornets shooting right around 42% from the field since the start of the second half. Bacon's shot is off. Diallo with it. Six points for him. Inside. And Adams kicks to Diallo. And the officials call him for a three-second three violation. And some changes here for the Hornets. Kernan Gomez is checked in for Biombo. And Monks subbed in for Devontae Graham. Charlotte has gone 0-2 from deep to start things here in the second half. And here's Batum. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring hit from him. Baseline J on the way. The shot by Monk is no good. And for the Thunder, their shooting has been beyond great up until now. How about 57% from the field overall? Here's Muscala, and that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It goes on Cody Zeller. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Taking two shots. That's good from Muscala. He doesn't get the second one. Charlotte shooting just 31% in the game. Seven second difference, shot and game clock. Here's Monk. Here's Zeller. Second chance shot, count the bucket, and he's got a free throw coming up as well. Well, that's how you get great on the glass. I mean, Zeller doesn't take rebound and light. On the night, he's gone two for two at the stripe. You know, this is not an area where they expect him to contribute. You know, he's a guy that shot below 70% last season. Shooting one. And that one falls for Zeller. 11 seconds left here in the third quarter. Schroeder outside from past the arc. No good. 
And so it's Oklahoma City sitting at a lead of 40 points at the end of the quarter. Terrific play. From the field, they have been outstanding, amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. And now we have a moment to uh, reveal our State Farm assist of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with his feed. They had no chance to prevent that basket. <laughs> no, it's quick decision making. See a guy open, you can't hesitate. That, that, that's an outstanding play right there. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. They've got Martin, Cody Zeller out there with Hernan Gomez, and there's Monk, and it's Martin in at the two guard. So that's the lineup for Charlotte. The shot by Nader, no good. Outside, Martin. Down to five on the shot clock. And the rebound goes to the Thunder. You know what? You've got to always be in control of your emotions. That's his first personal foul. Here's Burton. Passes it to Gilgis Alexander. Adams, the pass to Burton. And Adams kicks to Nader. Five on the clock. That shot off the mark. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. It's Martin on the wing. Adams defending. Martin, the pass to Hernan Gomez. Unloads from nine. And two free throws coming up as the whistle blows. He barely missed that one. And in spurts, you can live with Hernan Gomez at the five. Yeah, you can. He's got that old school game, GA, that back to the basket game. He plays with physicality, toughness. He competes. And you can typically count on him to make the right basketball two play. Shots. And the first one at the line is good. But Daniels is checked in for Charlotte. That one falls, so he hits both of them. And this is one of the things they need to keep doing in the second half to get this win. Keep knocking down those free throws. They've been sensational here at the line. It's deflected. Fourth quarter now. We're about a minute and a half in. And one of the more explosive dunkers in the league. Monk seems to make a highlight reel play on a nightly basis. Yeah, a flashy player as an amateur and now as a pro. Monk has a 40 plus inch vert. That's right. Very few guys his size finishes the alley-oop the way he does. Two. The first free throw is good. And part of yet another great Kentucky recruiting class Monk declared along with De'Aaron Fox, Bam Adebayo, two other five stars. I mean, talk about an NBA factory. That school is always competitive. And the Thunder making a switch here. Dort's checked in. Oh. 
No good on the second, so he hits one of two. And Monk made second team All-American in his only year with the Wildcats, looking unstoppable on many occasions. I mean, he just overwhelmed college opponents with his athleticism. But you get to the NBA, you find out how many great athletes are in this league. That's when you have to retool aspects of your game, which is what Monk is in the process of doing. And it's the Hornets with the ball, but Thunder making the shot. Now Monk. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. That one on Gilgis Alexander. Understanding the shoot first mentality of Monk. Defense just got a little over aggressive that time. And he makes the first. Yeah, and for Monk, it's all about being more consistent. I mean, it, it, it's clear he doesn't lack confidence. Now he must channel this energy to become better. So he gets them both. For Oklahoma City, they've gone one of four since the end of the third quarter. Here's Gilgis Alexander. They get a hand on it, Baisley, and foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. Wow, wow, he got whacked on that one. Shouldn't be much That's debate there. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. And so he makes both from the line. Now here is Martin. Just a little under two and a half minutes have passed now here in the fourth. Here's Monk. Nader grabs the board. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus 10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. And the shot goes in. And even if Gilgis Alexander isn't the fastest guy out there, he stays in balance. It helps him to be effective on his drives. Now here is Mark. Vernon Gomez kicks to Martin. Shot clock at six. Right side, Martin. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Martin with it. Outside for Martin. Six to shoot. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Great job of screening there. Nice job to take it to the rim and get the finish. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We've got about three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. That's his second personal foul at the line. Deontay Burton at the line for two.
And the first one drops. He's perfect from the line this time. For Charlotte, they've gone one of three from the field to start the fourth quarter. Over three and a half minutes through the final quarter now. Pass to Monk. It's Martin on the wing. Five to shoot. Back to Monk. From outside, off the mark. The Thunder have gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. The Thunder with another miss. He's got to be disappointed with himself on that one. He has got to knock those down. Outside, Mark. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. Clearly a foul. At the line for your Hornets, shooting two, Caleb Martin. Two, two. And the first one at the line is good. Chris Paul, he's checked in for Gilgis Alexander. He hits both from the strike. Here's Paul. Tries it from 19. He scores his fifth field goal. He's taken nine shots to get those five. I mean, he's been terrific from the field so far this half. I mean, driving his percentage through the roof. Now, here's Monk. It's Martin on the wing. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. Here's Burton. And it's blocked. Now here is Martin. He's guarded closely. And finished off by Martin. Yeah, just a simple one-hand flush. I think he got a few more inches on his vertical by going with the spike. Paul outside. Cross contact on the shot, and now a three-point play chance as he'll head to the line. And, and after a scoreless first half, you're starting to see signs of life here in the second. At the line, Chris Paul. And that one falls for Paul. You know, he's going to finish his career way up there on the all-time steal list. Uh, that, that's one thing I know about CP3. Martin kicks to Hernan Gomez. Now, here's Monk. Tight defense on him. Outside for Martin. And too much time in the Three. lane. They get called for the three-second violation. And just a little too lax with that possession. And it cost him. Yeah, you got to be locked in at all times. Their inconsistent play is a big reason why they're losing. There's the pass to Burton. Here's Nader. Pretty early to be over the limit. That foul situation is something we want to keep an eye on. That's his first personal foul. Fifth team foul. Shooting for Oklahoma City. Lugans, Dort. Taking two shots.
He misses the free throw. He hits the second from the line. The Hornets have gone just 33% from the field in the fourth quarter so far. They are two of six. On its way from Monk for two. Up again. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. And it's Paul with the ball for Oklahoma City. Pass to Baisley. Here's Burton over Martin. And that one's good, Burton. Oh, he had him spinning. He looks like he's dizzy after that crossover. Hornets have gotten only three of their nine field goal attempts to go down since the end of the third. Pretty cold down the stretch. Here's Monk poked away. Hernan Gomez off with the layup. I mean, he struggles with his finishes sometimes. I mean, it's kept him from being an elite player. Let's it go with a three. It's good from long range. Burton's got seven now in this quarter. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Yeah, and they aren't just chucking up anything. I mean, they're doing a great job of creating quality looks. Now here is Martin. Back to Monk. Passes it to Hernan Gomez. Shot clock at five. Kicks it to Monk. Takes the three. No good. Shot missing. So the Thunder will take it the other way. If he'd been even halfway decent today, the score would be a lot different, but you can't get anything to fall. Charlotte's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Outside, Martin. And the shot is good. Thunder have gone 6 of 12 from the field here in the fourth and even 50%. Here's Burton. Pass to Dort. Lock at six. A floater. And McDaniels with the point. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. And the Thunder making a switch here. Muscala's checked in. Mike Muscala. The Hornets shooting a paltry 33% in the fourth. Not a good showing for this offense. Now, here's Monk. Defended by Paul. Monk kicks to Martin. Back to Monk. over Paul. The shot by Monk is no good. Oklahoma City shooting at a 46% clip in the fourth quarter. Here's Baisley and the turnover again by Oklahoma City. Charlotte Ball. Hornets shooting at a 32% clip from the field. They're just not executing. The pass to Hernan Gomez. And looks that's like green. the illegal pick was set. Yep, that's right. That'll get their attention. He didn't turn it over once in the first half. All of a sudden, he's given them one gift after another gift after another. Oklahoma City shooting so far very efficient. All around, about 55%. Muscala with the ball. And it's Martin picking him up. Here's Burton. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Now here is Martin. Comes up empty down low. And here is Paul. From 13, and he hits the jumper for two. Paul's got 16 here in the second half. I've heard CP3 called the monster of the mid-range. That shot is his bread and butter. Outside, Martin. 
Monk kicks to Martin. And he gets the whistle for the three-second call. And just a little too lax with that possession, and it cost them. Yeah, you got to be locked in at all times. Their inconsistent play is a big reason why they're losing. Oklahoma City has gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Here's Burton over Martin. And it's off the back rim. No good. He kicks it to Martin. Pass to Monk. One forty-one left in the fourth quarter. Back to Martin. Six on the shot clock. Martin inside. For a player who's almost a sure thing to score in tight, that was a stunner. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for Oklahoma City. And one area that stands out that uh, we've seen tonight from them, their aggressiveness in getting steals, something I know that you really value yourself. I, I think it sparked their offense. Uh, it, it deflates the opposition. And, and when you have the type of effort we saw tonight, it's pretty hard to overcome that defensive pressure down the stretch. And, you know, looking back at all the contributions tonight, it was a really phenomenal all-around game for Gallinari. Every time there was a big possession or a big play, he was a major contributor. Just a great all-around game. 105 left in the game. Here's Burton. Passes to Paul. It's stolen by Monk. Right side, Martin. Pass to Monk, fires from deep. Nader grabs the board. His bad night from the field is only going to get worse if he keeps throwing up shots like that. Martin against Paul. And rebounded by McDaniels. And taking care of the ball has been a problem for him. That's something they've got to fix. While the defense has been good, a lot of these turnovers have been unforced. Ball outside. So no problem for Oklahoma City as they get the win. A resounding victory for them. And Greg in enemy territory, no less. And that's exactly right. But with the way they controlled the game and, and just completely took the crowd out of it, that's how to get it done on the road. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. Chris, big win tonight. What do you think was the biggest factor? I mean, I don't know. You know, it was just our defense. You know, obviously our offense fed off of it. Guys made open shots. But I think we really locked down defensively, and that's what we're trying to make sure is that we're a defensive team every night. Well, you were a defensive team tonight, Chris. Thanks for your time. Kevin? David, thank you as always. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Chris Weber, Greg Anthony, and David Alders, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you later.